Okay, I'm going to walk you through how to do some graphing and data analysis for this Finches on Daphne major activity. Um, so you're going to be writing this as if uh, this was your IA, as if you actually went down to the Galapagos and collected data for your independent, uh, or sorry, internal assessment, which would be pretty cool. Um, so this will be one section of the IA, which is called the results analysis and conclusion section. Um, this is basically where you show all the data that you collected analyze that data for your research question, and then uh, interpret that data to sort of try to answer your research question. Um, so you're going to have three major sections in this. You're going to have graphical representations of the data. Um, that's what I'm going to show you how to do right now. You might also want to calculate mean uh, to show statistical results as well. I'll show you how to do that too. You should analyze that data uh, to identify trends. So do you see any patterns arising? Um, do you see uh, a certain shape in one graph uh, and not another, et cetera? Uh, do you see really different means or averages? Uh, and then you'll interpret that data to try to answer the research question. Our research question is which physical characteristics were key to Finch survival after the drought of 1977? Um, I've attached this IA rubric for how you'll be graded. Um, so this is one section of what is, I think, in total six sections of the IA. Um, so there's kind of like three, uh, three little bullet points that you'll be graded on, and then you can see the different uh, achievement levels here on the left. Um, so you're going to be constructing diagrams, charts. Um, so are you doing that completely, or are you doing that um, some graphs and charts, but with significant errors? Uh, you're going to analyze that data. So are you analyzing some of the data, but with some errors? Um, or are you analyzing it correctly and completely? And then finally, you're gonna use that data to interpret the trends, answer the research question. So you're either stating a conclusion that's not really supported by the data. Hopefully you don't do that. Uh, maybe you interpret some trends, but um, there's some validity. And then full credit would be interpreting trends so that a valid conclusion to the research question is deduced. Um, so sort of just stating an answer isn't really enough. You really want to interpret those graphs, really explain your answer and how you reached it. Um, so getting the data set, uh, we have it right here in the Excel file. Um, so you can actually open it just directly with Google Sheets. Um, it'll come up like this. You might actually need to resave that um, as a not XS, uh, XLSX file. This is for Microsoft Excel. Um, so Google might actually ask you to like make a copy, save it as a different format, or you can download this data set. Um, if you open a new window, there'll be a little download button like so. And if you download it, then you can just open a blank spreadsheet Go over here to file import. And you can do this with any data set that you find online. So if you have to uh, do some data analysis for another class, maybe for your IA next year, this is exactly how you'll do it. So I'll go to downloads where I downloaded it and I'll just click on the data set. Uh, this works with XLSX files. It also works with uh, .csv files. Those are kind of open source spreadsheet files that you'll see a lot of places using. And let's take a second. There we go. Uh, almost. Okay, well, while that loads, Let's revisit our research question. So we are interested, whoops. We are interested in which physical characteristics were key to Finch survival after the drought of 1977. So let's just take a look at our data set to start. Um, we see here's band. This refers to the, um, the marking band on each Finch. We got our species, they're all medium ground Finches. Um, six, some, sometimes they can identify it. Um, this will be important. This is the last year that they were identified. So if um, this would be the last year that they were alive. So we have birds alive in 1977 and then birds alive in 1978 and afterwards. So these birds from 1978 on were actually born after the drought. Um, so that's kind of useful for us. I'm actually going to copy that data and move it to a new page since we want to analyze these separately, right? Let's do two new sheets. Oops. Uh, this sheet will be finches after drought. And I'm just going to paste that exact data right here. Oops, that's not it. That's. Uh, let's try that again. Copy, control, or command 
let's see. Okay, cool, that worked. Uh, you might notice I don't have my headings. That kind of sucks. Let's bring those headings over too. So we'll scroll back up to the top and we'll grab this. Uh, you can actually just click the whole row here, right? So you could highlight, that's kind of hard. You actually can just click over here and then boom, we got the whole row. We'll just come over and just click over here and boom, all the titles are there. That's nice. And let's copy um, for finches that uh, died before the draft too. So we'll scroll down until we get to 1978. Cool. And we'll copy that into this sheet. Um, so this way I can sort of analyze, I can create graphs for before and after the drought. Uh, maybe let's just take a look again at this top part, see if there's any information. Okay, yeah, so this will tell you exactly what all these characteristics mean. So last year refers to the last year of that individual's life. 50 individuals did not survive beyond 1977, the year of the drought, whereas 50 survived afterwards. So we get to com compare 50 that lived and 50 that died. That's pretty nice. Uh, we also have weight in grams. Uh, tarsus is part of the leg. Um, beak length would be the length of the beak. And then beak depth would be kind of like how thick it is. Um, so on this bird right here, we got the beak length and then the beak depth that way. Um, great. So what we should do is we should start making some graphs. So what we want to know is if one population had maybe a bigger beak or a smaller beak or maybe longer legs or shorter legs or longer wings or shorter wings. So the way we wanna do this is to graph a histogram. This will show us the number of individuals that meet each criteria. Meet each criteria. Um, so we could have all the birds, see we have beak length here that's like around nine. So we would count how many birds have a beak length of around nine? How many birds have a beak length around 11, around 10, et cetera. Um, and then we can kind of see if there's a pattern um, and how that looks. So let's just create. Uh, so to create a, a graph, we want to make sure we're not on the master one because that'll give us all the data. We just want finches before, finches that died before the drought was over. Uh, so we'll click the whole column here and then we'll go insert chart. And then it always gives us a chart we don't want every time. See, lovely chart and not at all what we're interested in. Scatter charts are really good for looking at correlations, uh, things like that. In this case, we want to do a histogram. So the histogram here is going to show our variable on the bottom, beak length, um, from 9 millimeters to 12 and a half millimeters. And then this shows actually the count of birds. So we're seeing uh, 11 birds that had a beak length between 9 and a half and 10 millimeters. And we see one bird that had a beak length over 12 millimeters. Um, so this is this is so maybe somewhat helpful, but it's a little um, kind of zoomed out, right? We want to uh, affect this so it, it's a kind of a clearer picture. So we can actually um, click on your chart, and this tab will pop up. We're going to go to customize. Uh, we're going to click on histogram here. So uh, in histogram, since we're counting the number of individuals. We want to create what they call buckets. These buckets will basically be the size of this bar graph, right? So right now the buckets are from 10.5 to 11, from 11 to 11.5. So that's about 0.5 for those buckets. So we could change the size over here. We can make the bucket size one. Ooh, we could actually make the bucket size five. Oh, and then we'll see all the beak lengths fall within that range, right? They're all within a range of five millimeters. So we're actually going to want to go smaller we started with 0.5 and that was okay. Let's actually go even smaller than that. Let's do 0.25 millimeters for our bucket size. That's a little better. So now we can see we have birds with length from nine to 9.25, from 9.25 to 9.5, et cetera, right? And so each section is only 0.25. Um, so kind of a, a little bit clearer picture here. Um, and we're gonna do the same thing for um, beaches or finches after the drought. So we're going to go again, insert chart, uh, or you can actually click this little chart button over here, does the same thing. And again, it actually gave us the right one. So that's kind of nice. Maybe it learned. Let's go change those bucket sizes again. We want to make sure we have the same bucket size, um, at least um, for the same variable, right? So maybe on Tarsus, I have a different bucket size. 
but I just want to make sure that my tarsus is the same for finches before and finches after the drought. Okay, well, that's pretty nice. Um, so let's actually make a Google Doc so we can uh, compare these. Oops. Um, and you can actually copy these directly into a Google Doc, which is really nice. Um, so we'll copy the chart. And you can actually copy this directly into the Google Doc where you'll write your results and analysis section. Um, so this will be the first part of, of what you're going to do. So we'll come over here, we'll paste, and hopefully it'll work. And da 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 da. Well, maybe it'll work. Um, as it's working, you might come back here and you might look at some of the details and you might think, okay, this is kind of nice history of beak length. But if you remember, these are finches that survived the drought. Um, so maybe let's include that in the title. So you notice it'll change it over here on the side. We also just type right here. So let's do, um, let's just say beak length of survivors in millimeters. And then we can go to this other tab and actually change that name to beak length of non-survivors, I guess. Casualties, you could say. Of non-survivors is a little less, less grim. Okay, let's try to copy that one too. Let's see if this loaded over here. Oh, cool, it did. And then we'll paste the uh, other chart. Um, actually, we're gonna paste it above. We'll do the non-survivors first and then the survivors afterwards. So yeah, you'll notice link to spreadsheet. We wanna link it to the spreadsheet so we can actually update it. Uh, looks like it just pasted the same graph. Let me try this again. Okay. So that was that one, here's this one. We're gonna go copy chart. Try one more time. Cool, yeah, so beak length of non-survivors. Um, usually there's an update button since we did change this. I don't know why it's not updating, but um, then you can compare, right? So in this case, it's not really perfect yet. Because <clears throat> if you notice, our scale here goes 9 to 12.5, but this one actually goes 8.5 to 3. So maybe let's just go change that in non-survivors. We want to try to keep the same scale so we are not zoomed in on one graph, but zoomed out on another graph. That would kind of affect everything. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. Minimum value. We're going to do what? Uh, 8.5 to 13. So minimum value be 8.5. Maximum value. Whoa, 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 where'd you go? Where'd you go? There you go. 13. Okay. And then there should be a way to update it. Let's see if that works. Update. Oh, cool. Look at that. Update from Untitled Spreadsheet. Boom. And then it automatically updates it for you. Um, so now they're uh, the same scale and everything. So we can actually directly compare. Uh, which is pretty nice. Um, so you might, hmm, if you imagine like a, making a shape out of this, right? We kind of have like a bell curve, looks sort of like a bell. And then um, you want to see if that's moving. So it looks like maybe the beak length is a little shorter of non-survivors, maybe a little bit longer of those that did survive. Um, so you write about that in the, in the description, right? Um, this would be useful to calculate averages too. So I can just show you how to do that real quick. It's so, so, so easy on Excel or Google Sheets, uh, which you guys are really lucky for. Um, so to do an equation, we're going to type the equal sign and we're actually going to uh, start typing out average because they actually have a function to do average. And then we'll hit enter and you will notice it highlighted all of this in orange. So this is going to take the average of <clears throat> cell I20 or I2 right here, all the way down to I51 right here. And if I hit enter, it'll give me the average of 10.51. Cool. I'm just going to title this average over here so we remember. Um, so I could do that in each cell, right? I could type average, da, 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 da. 
um, which you can also do is, is this cool thing. See this little block here? This will copy the cell and do the same thing in the ones next to it. So now it's taking the average of the J block and this one's taking the average of the K column. So I just automatically calculated all those averages without having to do the work, which is just so nice, isn't it? There you go, averages. So we could do that average for uh, non-survivors. And then I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna paste it in the, uh, the survivors. So we can see if there's a difference. So that's 11 versus 10.5. Yeah, seems like kind of a difference there. Um, let's just drag these values over. Whoops, this is kind of weird, right? The average year was 1979. That doesn't make any sense. We'll delete that. Okay, cool. Um, so these are our averages. These might be useful to uh, include along with the graphs because they might show uh, an addition, excuse me, an additional difference. I'm just gonna paste these values directly beneath and I'm just gonna give myself a note here, averages of survivors. Oops, survivors, great. So we can actually just look really quick and see if there's any, any noticeable differences here. It looks like a lot of these features, there's not much of a difference, right? These first two are pretty much the same value. So that would be what, wing length and weight, not big difference there. Tarsus about the same. How about these other ones? Uh, maybe, maybe a slightly bigger difference here. Um, yeah, so what you should do is you should calculate um, all these graphs for each variable. Uh, if you'd like to work with someone else, you definitely can. Um, and then just describe what you're seeing in those graphs. So in this one, beak length was a little bit longer in survivors than it was in non-survivors. Uh, and then you might also include those averages too. Um, so probably you'll just post, paste the graphs, include uh, one or two sentences explaining what the graphs are showing. Uh, and then at the very end, you're gonna wanna try to answer that, this question, which physical characteristic do you think had the biggest impact in survival? So that'd be the physical characteristic that was the biggest difference, right? So we don't really see a big difference in wing length between the two years. Um, if we go back here, wing length was really similar, so maybe not the, the biggest factor in survival. Um, cool, so that should be enough for today. Um, as always, feel free to email me uh, if you have any questions.